Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, hello everyone. Oh, as usual, that thing is on. Let me turn it off. Give me two seconds. Alright, so um, before we begin, uh, anybody have any concern or questions? And uh, again, I see a couple of people are uh, jo have joined listen only. Please don't join listen only to my sessions. Please use microphone. You can just click on the speaker thingy over here, leave audio and come back with microphone. Alright, uh, uh, any questions? Anyone before we begin? About anything, any part of uh, any project related thing, any questions? Sir, I have a Go question ahead. about ahead, uh, milestone five uh, part. Uh, I think at the beginning about a eight man additional attribute. Okay, um, just, it is saying. Let me bring it up. Let's, yeah. Let me bring it up. So milestone five, yes. Yeah, about the uh, adding attributes. Uh, at the first line, it is saying array of. Uh, I product pointers. I am a little bit confused. I for that should I use the dynamic allocation or is this when it's array? Dynamic, you do so. The, so how it happens is is like this. So essentially, in your class, uh, you will create something like this. So um, let me just uh, illustrate. Have some kind of illustration. So uh, in here we are saying. Um, let me just. Why is it not? Oh. So we are saying, uh, did it move up or something? Um, okay, let's bring back down. Yeah, so it says array of uh, SDDS max item product pointers. What does it mean is that because in OOP244, we still don't know what pointers to pointers are, we do the dynamic memory allocation another way, which means when you're gonna do the allocation, amazing when I actually move it to another one it goes okay just a second there we go so we do it like this um, instead of uh, creating a dynamic array of pointers you create an array of pointers and individual elements will be dynamic which means you are going to so your uh, array will look like something like this this becomes the uh, let me just make it a little thicker so this becomes the uh, the pointer that you have uh, the uh, sorry the array of pointers that you have like this and it's not dynamic this array has a fixed size so this array over here this array will have a fixed size of stds max num items but each individual each individual elements of this array is a pointer which uh, essentially could be initially um, nothing there it, it doesn't point to anything and what you have would be something like this so this is going to be your array of pointers and this is in here this will be stds max num items this is uh, uh, the size that you have whatever it is and uh, this uh, I don't know what you want to call this array whatever you call this this is your array um, uh, and each individual uh, this is an array so each one of these things is an I product so in here the array is gonna point like this to different places in memory dynamically and you are going to have uh, if um, if assuming that perishable items are uh, square-like, so this this is a perishable, this is a perishable, uh, this is a perishable, and uh, say uh, regular items are sulker-like, this is an item and an item. So in this case, the size of our uh, inventory will be one, two, three, four, five. Therefore you need to have some kind of a uh, an integer to keep track of the number of uh, 
uh, items that you have and we can actually do it like this so this uh, if we uh, consider it like that this is going to be this is going to be one two three four five so that's going to be five over here uh, did i answer the question nari um oh yes so then um it has a maximum number of items but exactly. the, the maximum yeah. number of dynamic allocations so you yeah, cannot have more than 100 dynamic items allocated if it is, it yeah. means database is full. That's why um, that's why uh, I mention it like this, and I'm going to move this, and it's going to resize it again. Um, for some reason, when I do that, it, oh, oh <laughs> I need to clear the screen first to show it to you. So that's why it's interesting. As soon as I move it from screen to screen, it brings it halfway through. I don't know why it likes to be there. Okay. So that's why uh, we are mentioning over here, this application can only keep track of maximum of this many item products in time if more products are being managed they must be added to a separate data file does that make it clear now yeah i have a, a additional question about that to uh make it clear uh then when we are setting up the the attribute we don't need to mention about the maximum size of the array right because it's not uh set up yet maximum size board. of the array is this oh yeah yeah we do have that as a constant but like do have to use that um as an array size yeah that's the, gonna be your array size point. so if um yeah so that's gonna be so if um uh, let me just give you an example over here with say double so So, and this is, so essentially, if y w what you learned down to this point was that, why did I put void over here? I don't know, is that we created, and say, if, if I want to have series of doubles, okay, this is what you do. You write over here double pointer ptr then you say ptr is equal to new double say 20. it means i have 20 doubles are we okay with this uh, nari yes yes okay. what i'm saying is this because the items that i have are not like double that are fixed size they're gigantic um, objects it's an item perishable stuff right so instead of doing this if we assume that the double over here represents the items that we have for an example instead of having a double ptr we're going to have a double ptr 100 which means now i have 100 pointers of doubles and if i want to have 50 doubles uh, like if i want to have 10 uh, doubles allocated in here i have to say four integer i set to zero i less than 10 and i plus plus now i have to say over here ptr i is equal to new double therefore this hundred double pointers of mine are pointing to 10 individual dynamic doubles one by one and if i want to delete them it's not like deleting an array i have to write yet another loop over here and delete them individually as follows so i have to say delete ptr because individual pointers are pointing right now into the uh, to these doubles so so if i call this one five the diagram for it will be literally this as you see so this becomes my ptr these are 100 double pointers and obviously these are not it, th these are now five different objects, but in this case, these are all five doubles. Okay, does that answer the question? Yes. yes. Even if we don't use a hundred of them, we still are look. Uh, we still like have the hundred of like spaces. Pointers, at the beginning. But, these are, but these are just pointers. Yeah. Each one is only oh, pointers, two bytes, okay. right? Yes. Yeah, yes. But, uh, Thank if, you. If you yeah. actually want the item, then individually. So what keep tracks of how many are actually dynamically allocated is the size. Uh, attribute that you add to your uh, um, what should we call it um, uh, the eight management 
Okay. Are we good? Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah. Any other question, anyone? Before we begin the overview? No, Matthew, Joe, you said you had questions? Can I ask the little release the workshop time? Oh, I didn't get what you said. My apologies. When will you release workshop 10? Oh, workshop 10, I am working on it right now, and I'm, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, synchronized with uh, the project. So uh, we'll release it uh, in either today or tomorrow, but the due date is going to be later than usual. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, Matthew? You had a question? Is Matthew here at all? Yes. But apparently the microphone is not on. Anyways. All right. So uh, let's continue. Let's uh, start the overview. Since there are no questions, we can actually start the overview. And here is our project. So uh, to begin Milestone 5, as we discussed right now, and we went through it thoroughly, you, you need to add a couple of more things to your um, aid management. One is uh, uh, an array of iProduct pointers, which they're all empty. They don't point to anything. and as items are being added to the aid management, uh, individual dynamic memory allocation happens for each individual elements, and it's set to uh, whatever we are reading from the file. And as we are going through it, we're going to add to the number of iProduct items in a separate attribute, and that keeps track of, of how many actual um, um, iProducts we have in our system. Uh, we are okay uh, with that down to this point. Are we okay? Let me just write over here. Are we okay? All right. I, s I just saw Matthew, you answered over here. No, I'm sorry. So uh, turn on your microphone. It's easier to respond with voice. Anyways, um, so uh, let's start with run. So you got to modify your run function, okay? Um, uh, so if any menu is selected, so we know that, you know that we have in our, uh, from uh, um, milestone two, we have uh, a, a, a file pointer that is dynamically holding the name of the data file. Um, you modify your run. So if any menu item is selected before that file name is actually set to a proper file and it's opened, if that thing is null, no matter what the user select, you change their selections to number seven, and it's gonna go enter file name. So like that, if database is not selected, if user doesn't s select seven, it redirects them over there if they don't have a database open, because other than that, they can't do anything. So, um, so uh, to the logic behind it is that after you uh, in s call the, um, uh, the selection for the menu, it returns you a number that number that it receives uh, take a look at it if that number is not zero which means if they don't want to exit if the file name is null and the selection is not seven then direct them to seven so it's a three conditional if statement then you literally change that selection whatever it is to seven as it goes through and i see people are joining more with listen only please do not join in as listen only thank you very much uh, and the next thing is saving as exit. So what happens is that when uh, go to the end of your run function, at the end, you have to call the save function that you haven't implemented yet. So just create an empty save function is a void save void um, and call that function, which means when the, uh, when the program ends, it saves all the data into the file. Um, and that save function, uh, we'll talk about it later. So I created the link over here for you to see. So if you click, it tells you what it is, uh, which we don't want to talk about now. We'll talk about it soon as we go through it. So, so that's that one. So we just call a save function and then milestone five one begins. So the first milestone, the first thing that you need to submit for your project to be markable, which means you submit the first four milestones 
after that first four milestones being submitted for your project to be markable which means you gain any mark out of it you have to uh, uh, make option 7 and 1 functional which means loading the data file and list the information uh, in uh, the program and um, um, essentially this is going to be it so for the first milestone let me just bring it up into the so I, I, as I explain first I'm going to demonstrate how it works then I'm going to go through the implementation uh, project 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 um. okay so I have this uh, window uh, set to the project. So I'm gonna go tilde farda Soleimanlu slash uh, submit um, two four four or two hundred doesn't make any difference. Project M five one and I hit enter. There you go. So that's the first thing that's gonna happen. It's gonna bring it up and this is how it begins so uh, it starts the aid management system with no file in it and let me uh, at the same time put the uh, submission requirements so I'm going to open actually two of these so I have that one ready so I show you exactly what you have to enter so uh, milestone 5-1 that's interesting it brings it halfway through for some funny reason uh, okay so we're gonna go to milestone five one five one and uh, uh, tester program so so that's the tester program the test data is here so I'm got I have my test data at left and I have my execution at right so um, interesting resizing it brings it milestone five <sighs> sorry I resize it jumps all over the place so five one the tester program for it is right over here so all right so this is how it works so uh, because no file is open I'm gonna enter one over here and immediately it's gonna redirect me to the uh, open data file so it changes the the option to seven as you see it says open and in here I'm gonna put data dot that and I hit enter so what happens now it says six records loaded this is the records that we have ready for you to test you hit one over here so this is the um, uh, option seven that actually worked it means it it loaded the uh, the file so option seven is the first thing that you have to implement with lo which loads everything into the uh, f uh, into the system and I'll explain how then you press 1 for it to list it in this format in this format oh let's do it again you list it like this so it actually lists it in this format as you see uh, so now we have it and then after doing this uh, we hit enter only uh, which means uh, I don't want any individual ones to be uh, uh, displayed in descriptive mode so it goes out now I'm gonna list again now I'm gonna show item number five so I'm gonna hit number five or you can do six to see what's the difference so if I go six it shows with the description if I list again now I'm gonna do five now it's gonna show it like that so it shows the values like that and I hit zero and it saves and and, and exits of course it's gonna say the output is not the same because I went in 50 different ways but if you follow that uh, then uh, the output is going to be uh, identical so that's uh, uh, milestone 5.1 and let's see what needs to be done in milestone 5.1 milestone 5.1 so um, so 
to for milestone uh, to for milestone fire one first you have to uh, activate menu item seven for menu item seven you need the following uh, um, uh, methods created you need a method for saving records in a file uh, a method to deallocate all the memory allocated in class which is essentially a clear thingy that you can call in the destructor later on too <coughs> and I, I strongly suggest you create these things because they, they can be used in many different places in your application in your in the development of the other parts so so this one deletes so essentially for uh, for the deallocate what you do is you go on every individual element of iProducts array that you have up to the number of elements that you have in that variable one by one you delete them and then you delete the file name and you get out so that's the deallocating of all the memories obviously when you do the for the iProduct you don't need to set them to null because you have the size and size tells you which ones are usable but for the um, file name it's a good idea to set it to null then you have a method to to load and a method to save save uh, uh, essentially goes through every single element of the array goes to every single element of the array up to the size that you have in that variable and calls the save save method of the i i product and uh, your i product let me just take making sure that i'm calling the names properly so so yeah uh, it is safe so essentially what happens is that for the save method um, uh, you first let me just um, explain exactly how it's supposed to be done mm. yeah so first of all you make sure that the file name is not null which means uh, uh, you have a file to actually write into then uh, you open an OF stream with the same name of the files for writing so if there is anything in the file it will overwrite it it literally opens a file for writing and then you loop through every element of the i product up to the number of uh, elements that you kept track of and you call the save method of each of them one by one uh, uh, with a new line at the end so that's it uh, and that's it so it saves everything into the file and when the save method is over uh, automatically it's going to close the file and you're done so that's your save method so again you open the uh, you check to make sure that file name is not null and then after that you open an OF stream and uh, you uh, save uh, individual elements into the file and you're done and you add a new line at the end of each of them uh, so that's that one deallocate I already explained uh, and the load method so for load method what you do um, the very first thing that uh, uh, load method does is that if there is anything already in a system first it saves that to make sure everything's saved so when load method is called first you save everything then you call the second function so first you save then you call the deallocate to clean everything in the system now you are ready to load everything right uh, out of the file now <coughs> uh, uh, the very first thing that you're going to do you're going to open the file name uh, for reading in IF stream so what you're going to do you try to uh, open and see if the file opens or not okay now if the file opens um, um, it's you simply uh, uh, explain like would you like to uh, create a new data file or not and, and if you say yes um, you create a me small menu as you see over here so all these little things that you see are menus with one option so you simply create a menu with a yes and an exit and it, it creates the exit for you and uh, this this is used for yes and no so first you're gonna print uh, uh, so uh, um, you try to open the file for reading first and then close it immediately afterwards you don't need to uh, you sorry you open the file for reading and make sure it opens if it doesn't open it means uh, 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 file is not there okay if the file is not there um, which means you try to open the file is not there then you're gonna ask uh, hey there is no file you want to start with a new file 
you ask that question. And uh, um, uh, obviously, you close the file for reading because um, you don't need it anymore. Um, and then you say, would you like to create a new one? And uh, if they say yes, then you simply open the file for writing and then close it immediately after. So what happens is that it becomes a blank file and um, it's going to uh, overwrite it later on afterwards. So that's uh, uh, creating a new file. And yeah, you don't need to actually uh, create the file because at saving time it's going to create it anyway. But it's your choice. You can create an empty file or not create an empty file. It doesn't make any difference because at save time it always saves it. All you need to do is to keep the file name inside the, the name that you create inside the file name. The good thing about creating an empty file for it is that if they put a bad name inside the file, the creation will fail and you'll know that it's failed. But uh, anyways, it's not covered over here. So, uh, so number one, you try to open the file for reading. If you can't open it, if it doesn't open, then you print would you like to create a new file and you continue from there and and I see typos over here let me just um, open that one and fix it as I go so um, so uh, we are okay with the start of the loading we know what happens right and at the same time I am going to open the project so I have a question mm, of course um, for the load file, it says, so we save it, and then we load it, and then we deallocate de it. Yes. But when we deallocate it, we're putting the file name to, like, nothing, yes. like, erasing that's, it. That's before anything. So it means if half, like, if somebody's doing something on a system, they have 50 products that they are working with right now, and they want to ship to someplace, and another category wants up, they want to close this one and open another file to work with, Right. What they do, they select item 7. When they say select menu item 7, so what it does, it saves the current file, frees all the resources, then asks you to create a new one. So you don't lose the old data. Does that make sense? I think so. So let's say I have data dot that. That's what I'm working with, right? Yeah. Or let's say I'm calling it, um, I don't know, Flooding dot that. So these are the information. Th these are the things that I am sending for some flooding that happened somewhere. Okay. So I have flood dot that right now. Information is coming in, right? Yeah. Now there is some place another disaster. An earthquake is happening. So that's another thing. I want these flood information to be saved. That goes to another place. So I press seven. It saves all the information for the flood support that I have. Frees all the resources and says enter a new name. Now I'm going to say earthquake dot that and I hit enter a black file it because there is no file on a system it says there is no f uh, new file you want to create a new file I would say yes so it creates a new one and I have a blank system with nothing in it ready to get information for the new uh, disaster recovery got it so that would be if they press seven like a second time yeah at any uh, so when you press second seven okay uh, let me just bring the menu up so when you press seven, where am I? So okay. So when seven is hit, it's in two scenarios. Either you just started the program now, as you see. Okay. So I'm gonna press seven, and I'm opening data dot that right. So it opens, and I can see everything that I have. Okay. And now I'm done with this. I'm pressing seven again. Okay. Now I'm pressing seven again. It says what file file. So right now it saved all the old files and cleared everything in my information. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to say over here, um, flood dot that. Okay. And I hit enter. So now it, now it, it says, Hey, there is no, um, there is no such file. Are you sure you want to create a new file? I'm going to say yes, create a new file. Now I'm in flood that that. And if I list, there is nothing in there. I can start adding information to this. Uh, okay. I didn't understand that without it's seeing like it. like two different databases. Now, if I want to go to back file, the, the old file, there's no problem. I'll save this one. Now I'm going to open data dot that. Now it goes to the other one. Now I can list again those things that I had before. 
So okay. I can, so I can switch databases, different lists. I understand. Thank All you. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, so I wanted to open, the, so I have this open now, perfect. The uh, reason that I am opening this is that I, uh, I want to fix the problems that we have as we are going through it. So, um, this is uh, milestone five that I, was, that I was talking about. And I just noticed that I did not close the parentheses right at the beginning of the first thing when I was talking about... Uh, um, In here, I, uh, we mentioned 5.1, save as exit, and there we go. Okay, so let me go back to my project in here. So it's, uh, so we are talking about load. So load, save load method. This is the one that I mentioned over here, deallocates, yada, yada, yada. And I, where F name is the file. There we go. That's that's the one. The close parentheses I didn't have over there. Okay, so let's go back in here. Uh, now, um, print out and and everything is done. So down to this point, I either use the old file or I create a new file. Now, if the file opening was successful, what I will do over here is this. Okay, if the opening of the file is successful. It means now I have records to read, okay? So what I do, if you recall, an items SKU number started from four to nine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These were the numbers for it regular item. Numbers one, two, and three were perishable, if I recall correctly, okay? So what you do, first you take a peek to see what is the record that is coming up. You read one thing. If the SKU is between, the first digit is between 1 and 3, it means now you have, a, um, what should we call it? You have um, a perishable item. If, it's, if it is between 4 and 9, it means you have a regular item. So what you do, you create a temporary pointer, pointer of type I product that can carry both. Then you peek and see if you need to create a perishable or you create need to create an item depending on what it is you issue the proper new statement so if it, it is between one and three you create a perishable item in that temporary pointer if not you create a regular um, item uh, um, object inside the i product after it's created you simply tell to the new product to read yourself because now it reads with its own proper format, it will read the next uh, uh, record and brings it into the system. And you continue this in a loop until you can't read anymore, until reading fails. And you, all the items are going to be loaded in the system. So in detail, I explained over here. So let's read it and explain one more time. So if the file opening was successful, <coughs> peaks the first character of the record to determ determine if the record is perishable or not using the first digit of the SKU. I just explained that. If the upcoming record is a perishable, it will create a new perishable item in the next iProduct pointer element, either temp or into the product. It's your choice how to do it. So uh, because we have that size thingy that you have, it tells you exactly which one is the next. So if I have, so if the size is three, it means index number three is ready to be overwritten with. So it creates a perishable item. If the upcoming record is non-perishable item, it will create an item in the next I product pointer. Okay. If it's not recognized, okay, as a valid digit, then the IF stream is set to invalid state and it ends. So the caller program can detect that reading was uh, was unsuccessful. So if the allocation was a success, you call the load method of the of the item that you created it's either item or perishable but because load method is a pure virtual function automatically it calls the latest version of the method which means the proper thing will be auto loaded automatically and you keep doing that until you get to the end and everything is loaded are we okay with this uh, 
Um, professor, yes, could I uh, could I say something? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to point some other things out, but they're unrelated to this menu item. Could I? Um, then we're gonna go out. I'm gonna cover everything. Oh, so um, it's in the submission. It, pardon me. Um, it's a problem in the submission. What is the problem? Okay, so um, when I submitted. Okay, so it's in all of the parts when I received the email, the confirmation email, mm -hmm. it shows me all of everything that I have submitted except aidman.cpp and aidman.h. Oh, so it doesn't uh, send those things? Yes. Okay. So I'm not sure if you actually received them or is it just no, no, not no, no, sending no. us? Um, um, let, let, I just sent all those things to myself. Let me see if I missed it. Okay. And I thank you for that. You are my hero. I think you did uh, 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 caught the problems for the last ones too, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, 5-1 submission. Let me see if I have perishable item, 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 date, I product, I product, status, status, details, menu. And no, it I didn't, so I have to fix it. Let me actually, now that we are here, Actually, now that we're not here, I have actually a repository for that. So let me just go over here. Since you mentioned it, I'm going to bring it up. Project M1 config, that's the one. And what is being, first of all, uh, are we checking that you need it or not? So assessment files. Huh, I don't even have eight man in here. Okay. I have to put everything in here. That's interesting. So I didn't have this thing before? Man, oh man. I have to put all the files in here. It's only dates, status, and utils. Okay, we're going to fix that. All right. Uh, so all the files in the system has to be there. Let me just... So let me just add a note to fix it. I'm going to create a note over here. Fix the files required and submitted. And I'm, I'm surprised that this is, this is the assessment files. Oh, that's milestone one. What am I doing? My apologies. My apologies. Let me close that. That's not milestone one that I want. I want five one. Um, it's in all of the, it's until six yeah, let me as just, well. Yeah, let me just check. Yeah. Eight man is here, so that's correct. Let me go to submission. What are we submitting? What is perishable item, date, product, status, utils, menu, and there we go. So we don't have it. Now we add it. And aidman dot hncpp so save. Okay, that's one. And five two. They are all the same. You're right. I have to add them in every yeah. in each. And that's that one. Thank you very much. And that's that one. I wish you were my student. Ah, oh, thank I, you. I, no, 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 no. Yeah, I could, I could. Uh, uh, what should we call it? Um, um, uh, thank you by some giving you some bonus marks, but uh, you're not my student. I can't do that. <laughs> ah, that's okay. I um, I already pointed it out to Professor Cornell, but I thought I would tell you to, you okay, know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. Cornell's gonna let me know. Pro Cornell, yeah. Gonna, Cornell is pretty okay with this with submitter program. He probably fixes for himself. And yeah. I'm just going to push it and tell it to everybody to pull it so they'll know. And the last one. Save. I somehow missed it. And thank you very much. So let me just push it in case. Yeah, of I course. Uh, commit. Now I'm missing. Eight. Man. Commit and push. Okay, so that's done. Now I have to pull it in my own. Uh, da, 
that's interesting. What happened? Okay. All right. Okay, get pull. And okay, perfect. So I'm going to let them know that they're going to fix it and, and test it and so on and so forth. Okay, cancel. All right, good. So let's go to the next step. Uh, all right. Uh, and also, it's a good idea if I actually open this one instead of the one at the on the website because then we can actually see the changes as we are going through it so I'm going to just open this one instead and we talk about this one all right so five uh, one um, back five one five you're gonna go one so that's the load now we are going to talk about list items so um, how does list item work? It um, essentially what happens, you've already implemented the things that print everything individually. So you have these. All you need to do is to add a row number to it and that's it. Put it in a loop. So what happens is that uh, uh, it, it, it will call the list function uh, uh, and if any items are listed, uh, uh, if, if uh, if anything is uh, is listed, it prints the, the following thing at the at the bottom. So essentially, um, it lists everything. Now we're going to see what the list function is. So when you do menu item, it calls the list function. If anything is actually listed, it prints something over here to show it individually. So uh, you peek to see what you want to get, and then you submit you. Uh, you can either put the value over here to show it, as I demonstrated bef before, so after showing the list, um, or uh, you choose just to hit enter and, and bypass it. What the list function does, it gets a, a subdescription. So essentially what you have over here is a subdescription. So if the subdescription is null, it uh, uh, prints uh, all the items in a linear format. So everything gets listed. You don't uh, select anything. If it is not null, it prints only the items that contains the sub description in their description. We've already have implementations for that. You know how to do it. Now, uh, uh, it returns the number of i products that it actually lists. So if we have seven, it returns seven. If uh, no items. Uh, uh, are listed you uh, if there is nothing over to list you just gonna show the list is empty and you go to new line and that's the format for it so you essentially put this at the beginning print individual ones and then put that one at the end and put a row number right in front of every and each of them are we okay with the list one list This will get you 10% of the mark. So uh, you do this, so 10% of your uh, final project is done. Now we're going to go to 5.2. Uh, 5.2, five two. Five two, uh, essentially, actually, you know what, let me just do this to make sure that it actually works and I submit it to myself so it's going to be uh, killing two birds with a stone one stone so let me just M five two, M five three, M five four, five six. Okay, good. So now uh, let me do the submission over here. So five two is going to be this. 
So for 5, 2, uh, enter to start. Uh, again, it brings the whole thing up. And um, what happens is that add menu item, you simply uh, select the add menu. And when the add menu is selected, so I select two over here, you can select either to add a perishable or non-perishable. Um, and uh, that's what it does. So um, um, because I didn't mention anything over here, again, it's, it's going to tell me what is a data file. I'm going to go data dot that, obviously. Uh, and after that, let me go to test set program so I can actually see um, what do we enter. So these are the information that I'm entering over here. So first I'm entering two over here, data dot that. Then I'm going to press one over here uh, to uh, um, uh, press two to add an item. So it says, which one do you want, perishable or non-perishable? I'm selecting one as perishable. And all these things uh, have, uh, have been tested with... Uh, previous milestones that's why I'm not going that much into detail into uh, 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 validation and stuff that's why you need to submit the first four milestones so two 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 over here two three four five and it's gonna be rice 200 100 16 10 uh, enter nothing I'm gonna enter over there now I'm gonna uh, press 2 again now I'm gonna press a 2 for uh, uh, non-perishable now I'm gonna press 4444 four, four, four over here for like that and uh, it's gonna say it's already in the system so it tests to make sure that you actually check if it's already in this system it won't accept it now I'm gonna press 0 and exit and that concludes everything and you can submit it and I'm going to submit it now to make sure so I hope it's going to be okay I'm going to check to see if I actually receive the 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 uh, aid man or not haven't received anything yet uh, we'll see what happens it says thank you it's submitted so hopefully I'm going to receive it soon Oh, there you go. I got it. And we have aid management over here received. Perfect. So um, matched. It's working now. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Okay. So I, I, I can resubmit. I, I have to just, no, no. I have to ask other profs to, to install oh. it. Okay. <laughs> wait, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> wait, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> actually, let me, let me tell two other profs to do it. So I'm going to say faculty over here and I'm going to say one of the students. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to say yes, um, one of my, one of, uh, matched, matched, one of Cornell's student pointed out, student pointed that out, it is fixed, please refetch the, um, the, uh, config files so give it a, a, a few minutes for the um, for the uh, other professors to actually do it Cornell usually does does it like immediately so uh, he has his own things but anyway so so that's that so that's it so now let's go back and see actually uh, how we actually implement this okay the very first thing that you need to implement for 5.2 is a search method. So with the search method over here, it returns, returns an integer. So it loops through all I product pointers elements. If the SKU is a match, it will return the index of uh, where it finds the match. Otherwise, it returns minus 1. You know how to do it. Just go through it, compare it with the... Um, you have the tools already created for it. Everything is uh, already uh, implemented for it. Uh, uh, and then uh, you do the menu item two. So, uh, so uh, if the data file name is um, null, it will print no data file is open. This is obsolete now. It will never happen because if you actually press two, it's going to move you over there. So I'm going to actually remove that from it. We don't need that anymore. So menu item two. So this is going to be uh, gone. Uh, I'll just remove it. 
if you implement it fine but if you don't it doesn't matter because now the menu doesn't let you go into the thing it will redirect you to seven anyways so uh so if i refresh that's going to be gone now there we go so didn't i just save it where is this copy to dev project and this one copy to the dev project just a second let me close these up okay and close that up and we are here okay all right now refresh and it should be good okay so if the number so the very first thing you're going to do is if number of iproduct items not less than the the value it will print database is full so when you are doing add the very first thing nari that brings us back to your question if y you can hear me uh, okay. uh yeah so remember that you said the number of things uh what happens if it reaches to the f to the maximum that's what happens so if user selects add and the number of i product items in a system is equal to the max number of items we simply say data is, is full uh, we can't do anything okay uh, if, if it's not then i'm going to show this message over here what is perishable and non-perishable and exit and everything so it actually shows this menu so you create this menu and you go perishable non-perishable user can either exit use one or two for perishable or non-perishable and based on the user entry you uh, 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 allocate in an I product pointer uh, the proper object that they want. So um, you create an I product pointer. If user selects to have perishable, you create a perishable. Otherwise, you create a non perishable. And then um, after that, it's all uh, 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 done automatically using the virtual functions that you have. So, um, so after user selects whatever it is you get an sku number and you search it if the sku number already exists you saw what happens it you show sku number is already in the system update yada 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 okay um, obviously it's not always 4444 so so in here i'm gonna say for this one i'm gonna say sku number so if sku number Nine 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 oh nine 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 is already yada yada instead is printed and I'm gonna say over here nine 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 is replaced with uh, the SKU number is printed and the item is deleted so. Uh, as soon as you do as soon as you receive the you create the item as soon as you create the item uh you get the sku and if the sku is already in the system you delete it and you get out it means they made a boo-boo uh they create uh, they they need to actually see what they wanted to do so that's that now if the sku is not found the rest of the data is got using the read function that you have uh with the c in so you can actually do it it gets all the information um, and if uh, after reading CN is everything is good and the state is good, it means you're in a good uh, state. Uh, uh, you simply add it to the uh, array of pointers uh, and add one to the number of items that you have. And that concludes uh, the uh, milestone 5.2. Are we okay with this? And if uh, any of you can later on, I would appreciate it if you could give me the timestamp of each milestone that I can later on add it so people don't have to listen to the whole thing to go to milestone number, whatever. So uh, later on, if you can tell me, like, for example, at 55.4, milestone number three has started, uh, I would really appreciate it and send it to me. So milestone number three uh, uh, is the remove item. So uh, for milestone number three, again, I'm going to bring it up. Submit milestone number three. Oh, 
okay so this is how the system works let's go to the test first to show you how it works then I'll explain so again in here I'm gonna enter 3 and as soon as I enter 3 it's gonna redirect me to 7 and I'm gonna put data dot that that is wrong I have to fix it it's not that hot it's data dot that so um, for mile three uh, data dot that the test five three the tester there we go fix that one all right refresh oh yeah data dot that so we get that and where is my I lost my there you go here it is so data dot that and I hit enter okay now I'm gonna hit three to remove an item okay so you're, it says um, enter a sub description so I'm gonna put en and it's gonna show me all the ENs that are in the list that's how the list works so you call the list function and it shows that one and then you ask for confirmation for user to look at the SKU and enter the SKU to 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 delete so I'm gonna put 12 one one three okay and I hit enter and it searches and finds it of course if it doesn't find it it's gonna tell that it doesn't exist and if it finds it it shows the description and says this is the one and that's how it works out okay many things I haven't tested over here mm, uh, just to give you a break mm, if you may have little problems like I didn't put a number that doesn't exist so it tells you item doesn't exist but um, anyways uh, I may add those things as a bonus or something but anyway so uh, that's the one so uh, uh, it sh tells you that this is going to be deleted are you sure or not then you press 1 uh, over here to say yes you are and it's going to say item removed uh, and 0 x uh, so and you list the, the items to show actually the item is removed in here then you put 0 and you exit and uh, oh sorry <laughs> it's got to give me error now because uh, I put it wrong so um, let me just do something in here and zero to exit obviously it's gonna show me that it didn't match but anyways it shows the data and I can guarantee that everything's I uh, can make sure that everything's done because it dumps the data out too but uh, that's how the um, submission is going to work so let's actually go back and see how uh, uh, we implement it so first you create a remove function a remove function receives an index and when it receives the index uh, it deletes the i product at the index and then shifts all the addresses in the i product one to left and then uh, reduces the number by one because I wanted to explain how it works I put an illustration over here this illustration over here is in PowerPoint 2 if you want to see it step by step that's how you can find it let me put it did I put it in here no it's not where did I put it um, so it should be in images remove PDF um, uh, there we go so it, it essentially is gonna be like this so to show it to you uh, in a present in a thing so this is the uh, array of i products that we have and the point to different types of items so when you actually say remove three you you delete the one at three therefore it deletes that one and then one by one you're gonna shift everything back in a loop so it brings everything back and therefore one item is removed and you update the the number of items to eight and that's it so that's how uh, one item is removed out of the system uh, are we okay with this all right so that's it that's how the remove is done and that concludes milestone three so remove is done the other one is update quantity update quantity is probably the difficult the most difficult one you can leave this at the end uh, if you think it's uh, if you want to do something else just go with something else and do this one at the uh, at the end it's kind of a little more tricky when you go when you have to go through it 
so for update quantity this is what happens so essentially you um, let me just go to the test program oh that's five three five four that's the one there you go again I went to five three five four. Uh, professor there's yeah. a small typo in milestone uh, five four where um, it says, let me open my notes. It says quantity uh, to add. It should be quantity to reduce in. There you go. If reduce is selected, a foolproof quantity value is received from one uh, up to. Like, where am I looking at? Hold it's on. the third uh, thing listed from the bottom. Starting uh, uh, here? Yeah. Uh, After reducing the quantity. Above it, the line above it. If we yeah, this one. Select the full proof quantity we use received from one up to quantity on hand using. Oh, so that's quantity to remove, quantity, reduce. Uh, it's okay. reduce, yeah. Yeah, did, did I say reduce? And like, does, does my program say reduce? Yeah, and the output, yes, it's uh, so this, in the so submission. This, so this is wrong, not the submission. <laughs> oh no no not the submission no oh, this, this typo this yeah, okay, yeah 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 no is submission is right all of them i tried to submit just now all of them went through okay perfect all right yeah. good okay so uh what else do i need to do over here i need to go to that one so so many things i have open uh where is it there you go so let's go back up in here three and come down to milestone five four so this one in here oh it's a description not here so the description in here so this is quantity this one is quantity to reduce right so five four one two this is the one quantity to reduce save check it out quantity to reduce okay thank you all right so for update quantity this is what happens uh, let's look at the tester information as you see there's plenty to enter over here that's why it's so uh, uh, daunting so it's to put this one at the, the last one this is the last thing that you can enter so I'll press 4 over here and then data dot that and then 4 again I'm gonna put English then 1 1 2 2 3 3 uh, 3 um, so that's the that's what I want to update okay yeah then I should be able to say 0 change my mind you come back to 4 uh, again EN one 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 two two three three okay and then add oh what did I do yeah um oh quality artificial fulfilled right right that's fine uh, I didn't follow what I said over here so one over here I, I put over here one then I'm gonna say four again so I'm here Oops. Okay, something is happening over here that there we go. Anyways, you know, so enter all the information and it goes through uh, adding and removing. I'm not going to go through it right now. It's going to be boring for everyone. So I'm just going to update one and show it show to you how it happens. So I'm going to say update now for update. Um, description, I'm going to put e EN again in here. One, one, so one one two two three obviously it has to be foolproof make sure everything's set Fo follow through it and you'll see uh, so again what i'm saying is that when you're actually getting the information if i'm actually saying over here reduce uh, the quantity then you have to make sure it's between 1 to 38 not more than that so it has to actually be foolproof now in here if i put uh, i don't know 20 then i uh, hit enter and I'm gonna go to list over here. You'll see that it's actually removed by 20 and if I add it's gonna be added So that's how it works 
But how to implement it would be like this. So 5.4. Um, so it prompts for the item description, as you saw. It uh, lists all the products that you have for that one. After uh, it displays, it receives the SKU. If the SKU is not found, obviously it's going to say SKU doesn't exist. If it exists, it's going to ask you if it's add or reduce. Depending on what the user do, it's going to do the co do, do the proper thing. So if it's add, it's going to add the values. Obviously, it's if like for example I have 40 and I have 25 over there it should only allow you to add 15 because that's the amount that you need to add um, uh, so it asks you to add uh, to the proper thing in a foolproof way and reduce works the same way and updates the list and at the end if you click on uh, hit on uh, listing it should show all the updated values and that's uh, updating quantity um, that's it. Uh, any questions about updating quantity? Obviously, uh, what I will do, I'm going to add Q and A uh, sessions in next in in the coming week many times, um, and put the. Uh, uh, what should I call it? Um, times uh, on the on the project page. If anybody have any problem, you can ask me. If you're my student or not, it doesn't matter. You can just uh, be on those sessions and ask me any questions if you want. If anything goes wrong, Ma, go ahead. Yes, what's up? <coughs> you have a question? I'm sorry, I misclicked. Misclicked? Okay, that's fine. All right, milestone five five is probably the easiest one you have. Is sorting. Um, use bubble sort, quick sort, whatever you want. All you need to do is to <coughs> uh, uh, get the uh, uh, difference between the quantity needed and the quantity on hand <coughs> and do a descending search based on that value. So the one that needs most value is going to be shown at the top. That's how that works. So uh, um, um, displaying it will be like this. Exit. Okay, so five five. It's going to be like that. You just <coughs> so if I want to sort five, obviously it's going to go that or that, that, and I'm going to put five again. And now it's sorted. If I show it, you'll see the one that I need most is at the top. So this one is hundred. This one needs fifty five. This one needs twenty five. This one needs three, and this one needs one. And the uh, last one is the one that is completely uh, fulfilled. Uh, are we okay with the sort? Again, remember, when you are sorting, going back to the illustration that we had in the PowerPoint thingy, when you are sorting, don't sort the object, only sort the addresses. If you sort the objects, you're going to be in trouble. Lots of, it's going to be a very expensive project to do, okay? It's an expensive process to do if you keep copying and uh, copying the objects around. Uh, obviously, and especially when one is an item and the other one is a, a perishable, you're going to be in trouble. Don't do that. Make sure that you uh, sort the addresses. So, uh, cop uh, sort the addresses over here. So after it's done, uh, the objects remain in the same place in memory. Just the addresses in the array will be uh, changed. Remember to sort only that way. And the last one is five six, which is. Uh, I didn't mention what is 5.6, did I? 5.5 five is sort. What is 5.6? I didn't mention which menu item is that. Let me just uh, fix that. So 5.6 uh, is ship items. So in, let me fix that. That's ship items. So 5.6 will be 5.6. ship items save okay so ship items is pretty simple too so what you do uh, for ship items uh, uh, it only ships the items that are fulfilled it doesn't ship everything it ships the one that r have reached the quantity needed so what happens is that when you ship it it's going to go through every single individual item that you have 
it checks to see if that item is actually uh, if that item is uh, um, actually have the quantity needed equal to the uh, quantity on hand if the two values are are equal it first prints it into the uh, shipping order.txt file using that format exactly the same way you're listing it on a screen it will put it in there and then removes it from the array and keeps going like that and like that everything that is uh, everything that is uh, uh, that has the uh, quantity will be removed so uh, if I just exit this one and go 56 so if I go to ship items 6 ship items uh, so that uh, dot that and if I go like this now if I go ship items it's gonna um, say items shipped and if I now list you will see that items that are over here are the ones that are uh, all fulfilled uh, are are not fulfilled they they still need more stuff to go through and if I exit and I'll go cat um, uh, actually I think it cats it at the end there you go so uh, this this is the shipping order so it actually puts the shipping order and the date current date and then it shows all the items that uh, are actually um, about to ship get shipped and that's that and that's the last one uh any question about any of the milestones any questions um professor yes. uh, there, there's just one thing i'd like to point out i'm not sure if it was intentionally mm -hmm. not there or not it's in the end at the very end of milestone five part six mm -hmm. um so it's just when i was trying to submit you know how after you finish the program the uh, memory uh, memory leak test appears. Uh -huh. So it used to show my address right to the next of that last line you're asking us to print. So there should be a new line right after it. Let me let me just let me just let me just print it and see what happens. Give me two seconds. Let me run it. Give me two seconds. Where is it? I'm gonna actually submit it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let me uh, where is it? So mm. This is the one. Let's bring it up. So test the program for five six. That's the test data. Why is it yeah, again? The problem is not in the submission. It's in a probably tester, like the tester. I would just want to see how it's. Oh okay. 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 Because okay. when you submit, you say it doesn't put the thing at the end, right? Yeah. So I had to add a new line at the end of the file. That's it. Oh. Hmm. Okay, let me see what's going on. <laughs> let me see what's going on. So uh, let me submit. Five, six. So first I'm going to put seven. So that's the one I think. It says seven. That, uh, dot, that. And it says six. One. Enter and zero. So you were saying, what does it do? Okay, for me, um, do you see after the la last, yeah, this line, it used to show it right next to the dashes. It used to do that? Yeah, I mean, it's it still does. So I just so had so, to. So, so probably your shipping order, you have to add a new line at the end. New line, that. that's it. Yeah, that's right. that's yeah. that's it. Okay, all right. Yeah. So let me just submit it to make sure this one, actually, I get the aid man too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so that's it. Um, anyone have any question? Isabella. Because um, I am not at the submission point for part five. But if we submit, so like obviously if we submit things like before they're due, great. If we wanted to like, if we were like almost finished like milestone 5.5 5 and we didn't get it in on time, would it count as like the entire thing is submitted no, no, late no, or just that, that part one. submitted late? No, no, only that one. Okay. Only I just wanted one. to make sure. That's that's why I made it part by part, because before we used to have the submission as a whole thing, and students would have got stressed because they didn't just implement one part and they couldn't submit, right? So that's yeah. this, th I started doing it like this, so it's part by part. So if, like, and it doesn't have to be in order. So do the seven and one, because that's what the data you need to be able to do anything, and then do sort immediately to get the 10% and be done with it. 
because that's easy. Mm -hmm. And keep doing stuff like that. The ones that are easy, do those things, and then you can continue to rest. Some of them are dependent to the other ones, like uh, the one that, for example, you ship, it needs the remove function that you create for remove. But uh, um, it's uh, they're pretty easy to go through it, okay? Um, uh, if any of you, any of the students that is listening to this thing, if you have any questions and you don't get a hold of your prof or something that you needed help with, let me know and I'll uh, um, uh, send a message on Microsoft Teams and I'll try to get back to you. I have not 24 messages over there that I have to look for <laughs> to see who's asking for what, but as soon as uh, I get to you, I can, I'll answer you. And if you see me away or if you see me available, you can call me. You don't need to ask if I can call you. Just call me and uh, um, I'll reply to you. Any question, anyone? Um, well, no question. I just wanted to say um, I wasn't here at the start of the session. I had class, okay. um, but I got the timestamps of the last four parts. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the, yeah. the, if any, uh, sure. Uh, uh, last four parts is fine. Thank you very much. Just email it to me if you don't mind or send it to Teams. Uh, uh, as yeah, a yeah, I will. Thank I you. Will. So yeah. I can add it yeah, for no other people to use it. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Of course. All right. Uh, if uh, somebody had a question uh, that I missed, anyone? No? Sir, hi. Um, hi, go My ahead. name is Yunus. Um, hi, uh, so just to make sure. So the due date is April the 10th, but the rejection date says it's April 17th. Yes. So if we can't uh, submit it uh, before 10th, we still have time before 17th. So and for every day you lose 10%. From, from, from that the particular, whole thing. No, 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 no. From that particular one. Oh. Okay. So if you submit f five of them, and the sixth oh. one is missing, you only lose the ten percent for that one. The rest mm. of them are all time. After seventeenth, I can't submit anything. You but if I, it. if I submit after tenth, I will still lose ten percent. Ten percent per day. Per day. Per day for the one you are you haven't submitted. Mm, okay. For the rest of them, you whatever you submit beforehand, just, you you're on time on it. Just to make sure that I get don't get confused about this, I will try to finish before. So and I, I specifically mentioned over here to put over here, to, and I said over here, optional with ten percent penalty. I should have said pen per day. Let me just do that. I actually no, that's ten percent penalty if you don't submit it at all. But uh, what you need to do, Yunus, like uh, Yunus, right? Is that, am I, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What yeah. you need to do to, to see exactly how it's done, just put it like this and put dash do over here. It tells you exactly how it's happening. You see that? Okay. I mentioned it in, a pro in the project mm. too. You just put dash do. It tells you exactly which one is when. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. No Appreciate problem. it. No problem. Anyone else? Any question? Um, well, I, I I have a question about something in my code that I had to do. I'm not sure if I can. Oh, you want you, you can get to t Microsoft Teams with me if you want to. Uh, okay, yeah, that would be great. After this, you can just call me on Microsoft Teams. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, are we all okay, everyone? Anyone have any question? Any question one? Any question two? Thank you very much. Uh, I'll try to put another session, help session, before the end of the week. Uh, if anybody have any question about the project, uh, you can um, contact me and ask me questions if you want to. If you couldn't get a hold of your prof, of course. First, your prof. If you couldn't get a hold of your prof, then me. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. And Madge. You too. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. Yes, sir. professor. Madge. Can I eat something first? I'm dying of hunger. Right? Of, of course, of course. I mean, I, I can I can contact uh, Professor Cornell. That's okay too. No that problem. Doesn't matter. Um, no, no. I I would love to talk I, to you. There's no problem. Uh, okay, I would I would love that too. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah so take your time. Like, give me like an hour so I can go. Uh, eat and take come back and take then... as much as you want. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Yeah. After yeah. No hour. problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bon appetit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Salut. Everybody. Goodbye and good luck with Bye. everything. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Bon appetit, Professor. Bye. 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 Bye.